let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen. Now I am using our stage account. So that is always the environment where we test things. So sometimes we hit a little error at doing the demos in here, but hopefully we'll, we'll be okay. So I've logged into Serve Tennis. So I've come into my Serve Tennis account. I've logged in. I've navigated over here to the tournaments module over here on the left-hand side. Now, once we're in the tournaments module, if you already run something before, maybe a summer circuit, or you've got other events coming up, maybe running a WTN tournament, it's going to show in here. You're going to see the list of all the tournaments you've got active. If you've run something in the past, that'll be under completed. Now, if this is your first time in here, you will need to set up a Stripe account. Stripe is what's used to process payment, even if it's a free tournament. There'll be a banner across the top here saying connect to Stripe. And the system will walk you through how to set up that Stripe. And it's a Stripe Express account within the system. But once that's set up, you'll be able to go ahead and hit this add tournament button over here on the right hand side. Now from here is we have our options of what tournament's running. So we've got our, our W10 tournament up top. We've got our junior, adult, wheelchair, and pickleball. Now, if we're looking to obviously run a dominant duo, we're going to have to do this under the junior or adult categories right now, because right now the W10 tournament doesn't support team events. It can only run like individual, so singles and doubles events. So you can kind of pick your pathway depending what kind of players you're looking for. So obviously I'm going to go to the adult pathway here, and I'm going to come along and select an unsanctioned. Now you will see we do have other sanctioned levels, so this is more your USDA ranked tournaments. We do have a tile for your ITA summer circuit, and we do have a tile for tennis on campus. But for this case, in running a dominant duo, we're going to run it under the unsanctioned space. So I select that option. And then the next screen is going to tell me, kind of walk through a little bit about the event details. So kind of the name of the tournament, where it is, and the date and time. So we're going to pop that up in here as well. So I might just put a uh, dominant duo example. We're going to pop in the location. 99% uh, of the locations will show. If your location does not show, you will get the option to say add facility. You can just click on that step and follow the steps in there as well. But in this case, my location is, so I'm gonna process through. Work down, we've got the start date and end date of the tournament. So we're gonna pop some dates in there. And then we're gonna come along and have the registration date and time. Now you can set a custom registration open date, or you can just say, hey, as soon as the tournament's published and live, players can start registering. You can then go ahead and adjust the registration close date and time as you wish. I'm in this case going to just set it in the past just because that will allow me to process through the rest of the demo and get it into the tournament desk itself. Tournament director, you do have to be an approved tournament director. So you do have to have an invite from your local USDA section and you do need to have safe play compliance. Okay, so if you're unsure how to become a tournament director, you can reach out to myself, reach out to your section, and we can kind of point you in the right direction as to where you need to go. But if you have any questions at any point, obviously, you know, the team at the ITA are great. They can kind of help direct you, or you can reach out to myself and I can kind of direct you where you need to go to get that approval status as well. Referee, if you did want to have a referee for this, obviously you don't need to, you could put a referee in here, but then come along and select which account the money will go to if there is a cost for this tournament. Okay, so you would just select your Stripe account from here, then we would hit create tournament. If you made an error, the system would tell you, but obviously I've got the green light here. It's now gonna let me process through and I can now go ahead and start adding events to my tournament because I've created the shell and now add the events. So I hit the add events button. And because we're doing a dominant duo, this is under the team events icon over here on the right hand side. So I'm gonna select team events. And now if we're doing a dominant duo, the system really helps you here. You have this toggle saying, is this a dominant duo event? If it is, Turn it on. Okay, that way the system now knows what you're running. It's going to make your life a lot easier as you progress through, and you'll see that in a little bit. So dominant duo is yes. I'm going to say the gender for my event is women. I'm going to say it's an open one, and we're doing the yellow ball color. Now, if you were looking to do a men's and a women's, you would need to add the women's event, save it, and then go and add the men's event afterwards. Okay, obviously you can also be mixed and covered in here as well. You can then go and put the, the actual dates, but the event will sit within the tournament. So maybe if you're doing a, win, a men's event and a women's event, maybe the men's at the start of the week, the women's at the end of the week, or vice versa, it allows you to control that. We can have event check-in as well. And then you can also have the cost for the team. Okay, so we're gonna have price per player. Please note this as well, obviously dominant duo is two players. Okay, the price is per player, not by per team. So if I say it's 50 bucks per player, Obviously, I'm going to be getting 100 bucks per team. 
minus the 3.5% plus 50 cents transaction fee, which is the cost of serve tennis. No other cost, just that 3.5 and 50 cents. You can then go ahead and select the number of teams selected in the draw. So if I have a team limit of 32, obviously dominant US doubles, so that will allow me to basically have 64 players in the event itself. Okay, so note the price is per player, but the selection numbers is on per team. Okay. Then you go through, you can do your selection process. Now, because it's you know unsanctioned, you know, obviously you can select your teams on whatever criteria you want. And obviously, whatever you select here, you're actually not tied to when you come to selections. Information about the facility and obviously information about the draw you're hoping to run. And again, this is arbitrary. You're not tied to what you select here. I might say I want to do a compass draw, but only get three teams. Now, a compass draw isn't going to work very well with three teams. So I'd obviously switch that. So you put in what you hope to do, but obviously then you can flex that out. So I hit submit. And now that the event has been added. And like I said, if I wanted to go now and do a men's event as well, I would do the same steps again. I would hit add events, team events, select you know the gender select dominant duo on select the gender and process through that way okay in this example i'm happy just to have women's event that's fine that's all i'm looking to run so i'm going to leave it as that you can see at the top here we do still have some checklist items so we come into that checklist and it's going to tell us what we need to do still so it's going to tell me to add or confirm website information now i can hit add web info here or i can come up to the top and add the web info here what this allows you to do is just put a lot of information about the event you're looking to run. Okay, and you can update this site at any time. It's not locked down. So obviously the good thing is here with the more information you add, the less questions you as a tournament director are going to get. Okay, so it's your friend. Use this page. Do you have stringers on site? Is there a combination? You know, what, what are you looking to run? You know, any information about the format? Are you going to allow late withdrawal rules and what your policy is on that? Put that information in here. It's going to make your life a lot easier, obviously, when running the event itself. You don't have to, but I obviously recommend you do. You can add your and logo in here as well. So if you want to brand it with your college's logo, you can click on here and follow the steps to, to upload a logo. You can also upload a cover image and also a waiver if you're looking to upload a waiver as well. I'm going to go back to the checklist here. So once you've done your website information, you're then going to obviously confirm the web information. I'm going to confirm for the purpose of the demo. I'm not going to edit. And then you need to confirm your rules and pricing. Now, this is important because obviously this is relates to the money and how you're going to get paid. So here under rules and pricing, you can control, are you going to allow players to register in different age groups? So maybe you're doing adults. Are you going to allow them to do open and over 45s? Okay, if you're doing something like that. You can also do discounts. So let's say you were doing a men's event, uh, a women's dominant duo, and then a mixed dominant duo additionally, so three events. You can offer discounts if people play in multiple events. Not always really applicable in a team space, but just know that it is in there. And to get through the checklist process, you do have to confirm that you're happy with what's been set and what currently is that set up. But once that's done and we get all our tasks complete, we can go ahead and submit for approval. Now this goes to your local section. Okay, so they will just approve it and say, yep, you're good to go. Now once we hit submit, normally it can take them 24 hours or so to kind of approve i have mindset to auto approve so if i refresh my tournament's going to be approved now it's in an approved state okay so now players could go on the website they can see all the information i added they can start registering now when a player registers for an event okay it acts like a doubles event so if i go and register I can either A, invite another person to play with me. So I could say, I could email Lauren, basically put Lauren's number in and say, hey, do you want to play this with me? She would get an email. She can accept or decline it. I can register and set myself as looking for a partner. So I might do that. Bruce comes along, registers, sees my name and says, yeah, I want to play with Peter. Great. I would then get an email saying, hey, Bruce selected you for a partner. Do you want to do that? Yes or no? I can confirm or reject from there. And the last option is if, if you do that, kind of what Bruce did, when you go and register, if players are already registered, you can either set yourself as looking for a partner to say, hey, I don't have one, but can someone pair up me? You can add yourself to the list of, of those players, or you can select someone from the list who's saying they're looking for a partner. So there's multiple ways for players to pair up. So if they know their partner, they can just invite them. Super, super easy. If they don't know their partner, they don't have someone to play with, they can set themselves as looking for a partner. Now, you as a tournament director ultimately can pair and unpair players as you need to as well. So my events are closed because I set registration in the past, but obviously if registration was opened, there's process through the site here. 
Now back to this tournament, I'm going to quickly just manually add some players into this event just so I can kind of process into the tournament side of things. So bear with me, I'll do that quickly one second. So I'm going to just upload some players in. I'm not going to go into too much detail how I'm doing this right now, but if any of you have questions on, on how to bulk add players in, that's definitely something we can provide some information on for you guys. So whilst this loads up, I'm going to just pause for a second. Okay, perfect. So my tournament set up, players are registered, I'm good to go. So I come to my tournament, and when I come to the players tab, it's going to default to all events. I'm going to see all the players that are registered for my event. Okay, so these are all the players, and I see their, double, their WTN as well. And I can choose to see their doubles WTN if I want. If I want to update it, so let's say registration opened five weeks ago, I might want to hit refresh WTN so it pulls the most up-to-date WTN of the players as well. So nice tool in there. And when you do refresh it, you get like a timestamp so you know when the last kind of refresh or pull was, okay? From here, you can select players or everyone and email them. You can also hit these three dots to download data and request payments as well. So if you manually added someone, like I did, I could send them a request for payment and say, hey, you need to pay me X amount of dollars, okay? But we need to get into our selections. So we need to kind of tell the system who's in. So we come to players and we toggle to the women, the, um, even if it's all events, we need to toggle to player selections right here. This will show you all the events you have at your, your tournament, what you need to do selections for. So I'm going to come along and hit selections. Now the system's going to pull a list. Now obviously, depending what your criteria of, of you know, selection is, you're going to pull that list that's applicable. Okay, so I'm going to do WTN. So we hit apply. Now, if the players register publicly, which is obviously 99 times out of 100 they're going to do, and they've paired themselves up in that flow, they're going to all list under this paired column right here. Now, because I manually added all my players, they're all going to sit under the unpaired players, which is also what players would be if they couldn't find a partner. So let's say I registered for the tournament, I couldn't find a partner, no one selected me to be their partner, I would be sitting here in this unpaired state, okay? Now, the tournament director, you could come along and say, you know what, I'm going to add some doubles teams. And you could just say, hey, pair this player with this player and this player and this player and so on. Okay. Obviously, for demo purpose, where I'm just manually adding players, I got to pair them all up. But in real life, you know, the players are going to register on their own kind of on their own time. So they will be pairing themselves up during that flow. Okay. So once that's happened, like I say, the players would sit under this pair tab right here. You'd see all your players that paired themselves up over here and all your players that couldn't find a partner over here. Now, what we need to do is we need to move the players from the right to the left, okay? So we can either drag one team at a time, okay? Or you can hit these three dots and hit add auto and assigned, and that moves everyone over in the order that they are in the same order over here. So if you're going to do that, just make sure you've got your WTN sort order correct, okay? Make sure, you know, if you're sorting top down or bottom up, you've got it the right way, okay? um but once we're good to go there like i say we can get everyone across and it'll fill up the main draw and it'll fill up the alternate list if if applicable and anyone who doesn't have a partner does have to be moved across to the unpaired players as well okay now once that's done we can save and then we can go ahead and finalize now before we finalize we can edit but once we hit finalize it locks it down okay we cannot make any change now but you will get confirmation in a second, but the event is finalized and you can see those buttons have gone away. So I now come back to the top. I tell people toggle back to all events, player selections. So you can kind of see, yep, you've done everything. You now need to go and hit charge players. Now, when you hit charge players, anyone who registers on the public side, so they put their credit card in, if they register that way, and if they've been selected and they're in the main draw, so they've got a partner, when I hit charge cards, those players will be charged. If someone was on the alternate list or if someone was in the unpaired status, they're not going to be charged because right now they're not playing. We're not going to charge them. Okay. Now, what is important to do right here is hit publish selection. Okay. What that does is it updates publicly the list. So from the list of entries to show who's actually in the main draw on the alternate list. So if I quickly go back to the tournament and come back to the events. Okay. If I refresh this. Okay. I haven't hit that publish selection right now. So when I come to players, we just see the entry list, okay? We don't know what partner they're with. We don't know, you know, what they're doing, anything like that. Now when I hit publish selection, and I refresh this screen, moment of truth. All right, you can see now it's changed. Here's are the main draw players. Here's are the team. 
and here's my and it, and if you wanted to go along you would see other events as well so exactly it's very very clear it tells you who's in who who is partnered with who and click on individual players and see the usda profile as well so that's why it's important to hit that publish selection button now from here now we go ahead and we hit launch tournament desk and now this is where you're going to be now for pretty much 99 percent of the rest of the time okay so this is where we're going to run the tournament do seeding draws all that fun stuff so once it loads up we're going to kind of get an overview screen okay this is an overview of all the players in the tournament okay so you're going to see the player what event they're in what team they're in okay have they signed in or not and the status and also the wtn as well now from this screen there's a lot of things you can do it's really useful you can select individual players or everyone and you can send them all, all an email. So any communication you want to do, really easy from here. You can also send them an SMS. So the SMS are limited to 160 characters, but if you need to fire off a quick text, hey, check your email, hey, you know, look at the website, you can easily do that. Or you could just send message one or five, information send, message two or five, information send. So really powerful communication tool, and this costs you guys nothing. So it's an amazing tool that's built in here of the platform so you know obviously strongly recommend you guys utilizing this because it's it's a really cool tool you can also add people to different events if you have one and you can download it to a, download all this data to a csv file now if you come across the teams this is basically all your teams now the beauty of doing a dominant duo because the players register as a doubles player and are selected as a doubles pair the system knows the teams it creates it for you really awesome okay so i could come into this team I see the two players and obviously the team name is after the two players. So it's really easy, really, really simple to do. Okay, so it's going to save you a lot of legwork running a dominant duo event as opposed to a custom team event where you have to kind of manually create those teams. So from here, we're pretty much good. We're in a good spot. So we can come along now, we come to events and we come to women's open team. Okay, so we're going to see the list of all the entries. Okay, so the team, how many players are in the team and we've got the WTN and and obviously the direct acceptance and obviously a seeding okay right now we haven't done a seed but if i wanted to i could either click on a team and i can move them to alternates or withdraw them if i need to if i just quickly move a team down to alternates if you wanted to move a team in you could click on the alternate list just like i moved them down hit the move to selected and now if you're moving a team that was in the alternate status to the main draw for the first time it's at this point that card will be charged and that's what this information is telling you here again as well because you're only charged when you're in the main draw, okay? But once you've got your kind of list correct, you can go ahead and do any seeding you might want to do. So you, you can come to seeding and you can obviously auto seed by whatever kind of ranking or WTN criteria you're pulling in. But you can also do manual seeding as well, okay? So you could hit manual seeding and type out the seeds, but obviously there's no validation to that. Now, I'm not sure why auto seed by WTN is not showing in my stage account, okay? Because it should be there because I pulled the WTN. I should be able to go ahead and auto seed by WTN. So that's probably just a little glitch in our stage account. In production, in the real world, you should have the ability to, to seed automatically by WTN, okay? So it's going to kind of save you some time there and make sure all the correct seeds are placed in the draw. Now, the last thing to kind of check before going in and making the draw is any avoidances. So we're going to add draw avoidance right here. And here's where we can kind of set up avoidance rules for the first round. Okay, so we have some preset rules like city, state, um, county, section, etc. Okay, but we also might want to do is set up your own custom avoidances. So maybe you've got players on a team. You might say, hey, you know what? This team and this team are both playing on the same college team. I don't want them playing with each other in the first round. Create my custom avoidance. I could call this um, uni of example okay so this whatever it is we would save that groups so and then we put that avoidance in okay so if you want to create those custom avoidances to maybe players from the same school aren't playing each other in the same round first round you can do that in the system just obviously make sure if you do do any avoidances make sure you don't over avoidance i've definitely gone into tournaments and seen tournament directors literally select every avoidance and then obviously a draw can't be made so a little common sense here but you know just be aware of it but you actually can over avoidance, okay? Well, if we add avoidances, we just hit save. And now we can see there's one rule and one player groups for this event. Okay, let me make sure I took it off. All right, so save avoidance. 
So we're good to go. Now we go ahead and make the draw. Okay, now if you're looking to do split draws, so if you're looking to kind of create a, a flight A and a flight B viability, you can do that. You would do that by coming along to manage draws, hit split draw, and you can say, I want two draws. We're splitting by, by WTN and we can have a waterfall or flighted. Okay, so you could create basically an A flight, the better players, and a B flight, the weaker players, if you wanted to. Okay. I'm not going to do it in this case. In this case, I'm just going to come as to draw and I'm just, going to, I'm just going to create one type of draw. Okay, so all my teams are going to go in this one draw. So I'd hit make draw. And now, obviously, I'm making the main draw. I can give it a name if I want. I'm going to say what draw type I'm looking to do. So obviously, you can do compass draws, elimination draws, round robin draws. There's lots of options in here. I'm going to just say in this example, it's first match loser, but the principle is the same no matter what draw you select. If you did seed, you're going to see the number of seeds here. And you go ahead and hit create custom scorecard. Okay, because we created the draw. Now we need to create the scorecard. Okay, so we've got these templates built in. You can create your own custom one, but because we're doing a dominant duo, we've got these pre built in here for you. So you can select same gender or mixed gender if you're doing a mixed one. So I'm going to say it's same gender and it's going to show me what the scorecard for that is. Okay, so your standard dominant duo event is going to be one doubles. Okay. And it's preloaded with, with the eight game pro step score format. And it's gonna be two singles, two tiebreak sets, 10 point match tiebreak, one, one all. Okay. If you wanted to change that, so let's say you wanted the doubles to be a different score, a different score format, you can simply hit edit and change the score format if you wish. Okay. I'm gonna leave mine as that because I'm happy with how that's set up. And each match is worth one point. Okay. So we can now go ahead, we hit make draw. Okay. System's gonna do its thing. And moment of truth, we got our draw. Okay, so you can see here, obviously, seeded players, I didn't see my draw, will be placed obviously in the correct line, buyers are placed in the correct position, and you can see all of the matchups that are applicable. Okay, so very, very easy, very simple to do. Now, obviously, the next stage probably is scheduling. Okay, so there's a couple of ways to kind of schedule within a team event. Okay, so very simply, you can click a match. So this team versus this team, I can click not schedule. And I can just tell the system, hey, it's going to be at, you know, this date. It's going to be at this time, at this location, save and done. And that schedule is added to the top. Very, very easy. Now, if you're looking to run this Donald Geo event at different locations, maybe you've got like satellite courts, maybe you've got an indoor outdoor facility, you do need to tell the system that. So to do that, you would come to the schedule tab right here and you'd basically set up your facilities. So you come to manage facilities. Now, it's already going to know your main location that you put in when you created the tournament. But let's say you've got indoor courts as well. You might want to hit add facility and you might call it uni indoor, whatever it is. Maybe it's a satellite location completely or just indoor outdoor, whatever it might be. You call it UI. So I'm going to add that facility now. So I've told the system, hey, I actually have access to courts at other areas. So now I come back to the events, come back to my draw. I'm going to go to schedule another match. I'm going to schedule this one the same way. So I click on it. Now I can select the date from the date picker. But and also another trick is you can also type it in. So I can also type in 18 for the 18th. And I could come along to the 5 and I could say, yep, it's 5, 3, 0 for PM. So you can select from the drop down for those parameters or you can type it in entirely up to you. But in this case, I'm going to say it's at the uni indoor location. Save, done. Okay, so super easy. So what we're doing here is scheduling not the individual matches right now in the matchup, just the overall matchup. Okay, so we're scheduling team A versus team B. Okay, not player A of team A versus player B of team B. Okay. So the other way of scheduling these right these matches is if you click on the dots along the top of the draw format, we have the schedule matches. This allows you to see all the matches in that round, and you can select all of them or multiples and say everything selected is going to be at this date, is going to be at this time, it's going to be at this location, save, now it's done. You could then move on to the next round and say, okay, all these matches are going to be on the 18th at this time, at this location, done. Okay, so this is another way to kind of process through the scheduling by just selecting the round, selecting the matches, date, and kind of moving through the process just like so, okay? So that's kind of one way to schedule, okay? Once we're happy with that and like when the scheduling done, draws are created, we can go ahead and publish the draws if you're ready. To do that, we would hit draw options and it would hit 
publish draw. Okay, so draw options, publish draw, and that makes the draw now public. And I can click on this view public web page icon up here. It'll take me out of the tournament desk side of things and see what the players see. Okay, so it's going to see the draw. Okay, and I can click into it and kind of see the matchup. Okay, if it's being filled out. Okay, which is what we're going to do now. So back to the draw. Okay, so we've done our draw creation. It's on our scheduling. Now we kind of start to need to fill up the lineups. Okay, so what we do is we come up to a match. So I'm going to come up to this match right here and we just hit enter score. Now it's going to open up that scorecard. Okay, the dialogue box of a doubles match and singles match. So we just need to tell the system who is playing on what position, basically. So for doubles, we would just say this player is one, this player is two on this team. Now, on this team, it's this player and this player done. Okay. Then we come down to singles matches. We'd say, okay, this player is number one. Okay. Playing this number one player here. And in line two singles, it's this player. Okay. Let's pick this player. And on line two singles over here, it is this player. Okay. So very easy just to process through that roster. And now, what you can also do, okay, is you can now schedule the individual match. So if you wanted to, and everyone does this scheduling a little bit different, is right now we scheduled the team match, so team A versus team B is this time. If you want to take it one step further, you can click on not scheduled and say, okay, this doubles match is at five o'clock. Okay, so I'm going to say this doubles match is at five. And then I'm hoping to have, say, the singles match, number one singles match. I'm thinking the doubles might take an hour. So I'm going to have the, the first singles match play at 6.30. Okay, this is probably a terrible actual scheduling job, but you get the idea. Then I could even say the third singles match is going to be on, I don't know, let's say 9.30, okay? And then we say, so you can see here, that's a way if you want to schedule just team A versus team B, um, but you could just say, hey, you're using court one, go play. Or you could go really specific and say the doubles are not this time and the singles are not this time. It's entirely up to you how you do that. Now, what you see also here is you can clear scorecard, edit the scorecard. You can download the empty scorecard template. So if you want to give this to the players to say, hey, go fill it out, bring the scorecard back to you when you're done. Or it's even nice, you can hit the populated scorecard. So you could say, hey, I've added your kind of player positions in here. Go play, bring back the score. So it's up to you how you want to run this. Some people I know like to give the blank scorecard, let the players fill out the names. Some people want to give the downloaded scorecard and do it that way. Entirely up to you. Okay. But what is nice, boy, once you set the lineup once, so once you set who's playing doubles, who's playing singles one, who's playing singles two, as a team progresses across the draw or through the draw, that lineup sticks. Okay. You won't have to go in and add each player in every single time. Obviously, if you need to make adjustments, you can. But if the lineup's going to stay consistent throughout the rest of the tournament, you do it once, you're done. Okay. Super easy. And what you will see now, if I go publicly on the public side and just open up that drawer again, if we open up this match, we just put the players in four. We're now going to see the players and their line positions have been saved on a scorecard, which the players can now publicly see as well. Okay. And you will note as well, players on the public side can download the scorecard PDF additionally as well if they so want to. All right, so moving forward now, so we've added added some players. We kind of probably got added some scores. Okay, so a couple of ways of doing that. All right, so what we can do is very simply from the draw, we just hit add score. We open the match we want to add scores into and enter it. So I hit enter score. Now, like everywhere else in serve tennis tournaments, you just enter the losing score. So I'm going to say this team lost, so I just enter two. It knows the score format, so it knows what the winning score would be. I would hit save and done. And now that team has got a point. There's a check mark here. I can now leave this box, go add some scores somewhere else, come back to that match. I know it's still 1-0. And then when I'm ready to add another score, open the score dialog box up again, enter the next score. So again, enter this score. Again, enter the losing score. So I'm going to say this play up here lost 1-1. One and one. So I'd hit 1. Select that box 1. It now knows the winner. So now we're in a tie situation, okay? No one's progressed through the draw yet. If I come out, we're going to see that because we've got a winner. But if I now go ahead and enter score again, I'm going to make this team win. Okay, hit one and two. Save and close. This team gets a green check mark. If I exit that, that team's now being progressed and there's a check mark by the winner. So it's very easy. And you can see you don't need to enter all the scores for the matchups in one go. You can enter a score, leave, enter another score with something else, come back, and it's going to help you. 
Now, if I go to enter score for this next match, what you're going to see here is the team that's already played a match. So this team here, this team here, this team here. Like I say, their players have already been populated. The other team, their players are not populated yet because they got to buy. So that's where I'm saying once a player's played a match, you don't need to keep adding in the roster. If you need to switch it, you can just click on it. Or you can just hit swap player and change it. But, you know, most of the time, there's not many changes going on there. Now, if I take it back one level, I'm quickly going to just end, edit this score here. So I'm going to take out this score. Um, just something to note as well. But if I edit this score as well, so I'm going to set it so this team has already won. Okay, so this team right here has won both matches. So mathematically, they've won the tournament. They've won the, the dual match. But this team has still been played. If I come out of here, this team has already been progressed through the draw, even though a match still does not have a score in. Okay, so something to be aware of there, but teams will get progressed through, even if there's still matches, but are still waiting for scores to be entered in here. Okay, so just something to be aware of in there as well. But on a whole, that's that's kind of really the, the simple rest of the process in running these, these dual match tournaments in the system. You know, it's, it's not too complicated, these dominant duos. It's very, very simple to do. Um, you will see you still have access to the matches tab. Okay, for those who've run so tennis before, the matches tab when it comes to team events, it's it's okay. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. If you're not fully used to using serve tennis, it can be a little bit daunting. What the matches tab does allow you to do is quickly search for a match, and if players have been added in, so you've got like the actual players' names, you can kind of hit that search and find that players match up in here. It's a little bit complicated if you're not comfortable with it, okay? But by all means, go play around with it. The other useful thing is you can also print the matches, okay? Now, this isn't like the match cards as such that you um, would see when you kind of open up the collection, but this would show you like player A versus player B and so on a little bit more. If I come back one more as well, what you, the other option you have still have is schedule. Now, schedule, if you don't add courts, Nothing's going to happen, but if you want to kind of have the ability to place team A versus team B on a court, you can do that. In the schedule tab, you would come under manage facilities and you would just tell one of your facilities what courts they have. So I come along to courts and I would say I have six courts, call them all, court one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. The time is more relevant if you're looking to do auto scheduling, which doesn't really work in team events. So if you want to put your court availability times in, great. But I wouldn't say it's a necessity unless you really are trying to manipulate your auto scheduling, which, to be honest, the team events don't even do. Okay. So once you've added courts, what you will see now is you have the courts option here. So what that allows you to do is basically see what matches are due up next. So this team versus this team. And you could basically put them on a court. So I could assign this, this team on court one. I could send a message. And it's going to basically show, okay, this team is going to be playing all the matches on court one. So if you want to do it like that, where literally you you tell a dominant duo match and you just say, hey, you guys are going to be playing court one, work through it or go, by all means you could do that because then that does give you the ability as well to publish this. So players would see what order of play, so what team match, team A versus team B is going on next and what teams are currently in the court. That looks like this for the public side of things from the schedule. Oh, that's always good. I told you I always hit errors sometimes in my stage environment. All right, not sure what's going on there. Let's see if I can try one more time. If not, but what it should do is it should show you basically like what what who's on court. Okay, but it won't show the individual player names. It will show the team names. Okay, so it works. Some people are fine with it, but for dominant duos and team events, it's it's hit or miss. Okay, the main basics really, honestly, is is having that scorecard correct, getting the players in the correct position. And obviously how you're entering the scores in the system as well. And again, with it being a dominant duo event, with these pre-populated scorecards, it's going to save you so much time and reduce the amount of errors massively. Okay, so it is your friend to run a dominant duo event in the platform. So that really, in a nutshell, is kind of how we want to go about running. So we kind of covered the sanction form. We covered, obviously, selections. We covered bringing players in. We've talked about seeding, we've talked about draw creation, score entry. That really is kind of the nutshell in how we want to run one of these tournaments. Now, I guess there are all obviously little nuances, uh, which obviously if you want to dive in more detail, you know, we're more than happy to kind of jump on the corner and walk you through it on a one-to-one -one basis. But a lot more depends sometimes on your facility, you know, how many courts you have, what kind of your withdrawal policy is and things like that as well. So if you do have any of those questions, if you do want to dive in detail, 
you know, please, please don't be afraid to reach out and always have the jump on. But yeah, I think that's kind of the main things we wanted to walk through today. I don't know, Lauren or Bruce, if you have any uh, questions coming in or if you have any questions you want us to recover again. No, thank you so much, Peter. Um, I, you know, I have a feeling that you will, we'll put this up on our website and as coaches need to access it, I'm sure they will have more questions. So, um, probably as, as coaches start to use this format, which I, I think is amazing. I mean, certainly if I was still coaching, this is a tournament that a uh, tournament format that I would, I would love to run. And I can see why players have so much fun. Uh, there's nothing worse than playing your doubles partner in a tournament. So <laughs> it, it definitely takes care of that. But, you know, I think we'll, um, you'll have more questions as, as coaches start accessing this video and we can also start maybe an FAQ if we see some, some similarities coming in. But thank you so much for for doing this for us, and um, yeah, I hope I hope some coaches start to hold dominant duo tournaments. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, really excited. It's, it's again all the feedback we get from players who play these that they love it. So yeah, it's, we're here to help where you need it. But thanks again for having us today. All right, Peter. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye. All.